What's up, boys? Call Sign Grammy here. Welcome to another DCS server review video where I highlight a different multiplayer uh, DCS server for you to check out, as well as give you a crash course on how to fly the missions for it so that you can have a good time and not really overcomplicate it all, as well as challenge yourself for this. Now, so far in this series, I've covered servers that are more of your beginner level servers and as well as more of your intermediary level servers. Today's server is going to be more of an advanced level multiplayer server. Today, we are going to cover the Gray Flag Persian Gulf server for DCS, and this comes courtesy of Death From Above. Here we are in their Discord server, which is what you're going to want to do. First things first, join their Discord server. Inside of their Discord server, you're going to get all the detailed information on the mission. You're going to find uh, other community members that can help you uh, out, walk you through some things, find a, um, you know, a wingman to go into the mission with, as well as you're going to need the password and the SRS information to even get into the server. I should also mention that to fly in the Persian Gulf uh, Great Flag server, you need two free mods. You're going to need the C-130 mod as well as the UH-60 mod. And those are required uh, for the server because they are used for the supply aspect of the mission, which I'll cover in a little bit more detail as we continue moving on. Let's go into the server itself and see what it's all about. All right, so you load in and you go to the F10 map in the Gray Flag Persian Gulf server. You see this and you immediately freak out and probably log out. No, don't do that just yet, okay? Let me help simplify what's going on here because at first glance, especially if you, if you haven't done more advanced, uh, you know, level multiplayer servers just yet, this can be completely a, uh, a mind, you know what, and uh, it can really throw you off. So the goal here is to really simplify this and give you a core understanding of what's going on here so you can jump in and get right into the action, have a good time, okay? So first things first is I'm gonna remove a lot of the extra uh, information here and strip it down to the bare minimum here. And now we get a better picture of what's going on here. I'll zoom in a little bit. Now in the current state, this mission uh, has recently begun. This isn't too far into the beginning of it all. Um, you can tell simply because the end of the mission tends to be up here by Kerman. Once you've reached this base and captured it, game's over, resets. So we've actually kind of got it here in a good time where we kind of demonstrate what's going on here. Um, when you first start, the majority of your aircraft are going to spawn or, or, or take off from the mainland down here, um, especially for your Air Force-based aircraft, F-16, F-15, uh, I believe the A-10s as well. Um, for those of you that are more into naval ops, you have your F-18s, your um, uh, Harriers are going to be on the carrier and the Tarawa, respectively. And uh, that's going to be the starting points when the mission starts. And you can actually see here, uh, once you hit the mainland in, uh, in Iran, this is where you kind of hit your first round of uh, enemy targets here. Now... How do you interpret this? What's going on here? How does this all work? Okay, simply put, the object of the mission is to capture the bases and move progressively deeper and deeper into Iran until, again, as I mentioned before, you get to Kerman, you capture this, and game's over. You've won, right? You, so you got to work your way from the very shoreline all the way back, little by little. You can actually see here the... Um, kind of, uh, you can't hover over them and show anything, but these are FARP locations or forward air bases and such. So as you um, advance, you unlock these new FARPs and these new bases that you can access to then, you know, keep pushing further and further. That's the core gameplay of the mission. Very simple in its concept here. However, the challenging part where it can throw people off is understanding that there's like four different things happening at once, kind of four different areas of operation. And in this server, they call them lattices. You have lattice alpha, bravo, charlie, delta. Now I'm gonna use the ruler tool here to give you a very rudimentary description and kind of a, a visual to explain how this is all working here, okay? So I'll draw a line right here. This isn't a one-for-one one ex exact of how it is in the server, but this is, again, to give you a just a frame of mind for reference. Now, I drew this line right here. Let's say, for example, everything here on the left of it would be lat lattice alpha. On the right side of it would be lattice bravo. If I drew another line up the middle, straight up the middle, well, then we already know bravo's on the left of it, which means Charlie's gonna be on the other side of that imaginary line. 
and then we'll draw one more over here, for example, let's say like this, everything over on the right side of this line is gonna be Delta, and then on the left of it is Charlie. And remember that what I just drew right here is just a rough general idea of how it's laid out, okay? It's not a one for one. That was the exact way that the lattice is set up like that. In fact, it's probably more like this. You get the idea. Now, when you spawn in, whether you're gonna go in the F-18, F-16, whatever aircraft you want to jump into here. And what's great about this server is that you have a lot of options. You wanna do fixed wing, you can do all of the aircraft. If you wanna do rotary, you can do any of the rotary. If you want to do supply stuff, and really support the uh, uh, su support everyone else in their missions, which is crucial. We'll talk about that again here in a few. You've got options for that. So there's a lot of different things you can do. Air to air, air to ground, supply runs, uh, drop off, troop transports. It's a lot of fun, a lot of variation, a lot of different things you can do. In, in one, let's say, four-hour block of period, if you're going to fly and, and play in the server, you can spend, do four different tasks. You know, Each hour, do something different. Air to ground, air to ground, air to air, run troops, run supplies. How do you decide where you're going to go and what you're going to do? First things first is you're going to come up here to the Mark Label tool, and you're going to drop a mark label anywhere on the map, really, for the, for the purposes of what I'm going to show with you here. Once you do that, you're going to go to the to the description area of that uh, mark label, and you're going to type in dash update space. And remember, the mission is designed and in, in set up to have four lattices, Alpha, Bravo, Charlie, Delta. So what you can do here is you can go through uh, all the four of those, Alpha through Delta, and see which ones are have active uh, enemy forces on and then decide which one you want to uh, target. So we'll start here with uh, up, uh, dash update space alpha. And there it is. It pops up here in the top right corner. Lattice alpha objective Levon Island conveniently is right here. We'll scroll in a little bit here and we'll see that um, all of these points, which are the red points here, um, correlate with what's going on here with the capture zones. And so, so we'll see airport, which is right here. Airport has more than a few enemies. And uh, here at military complex right here, everyone is still there. So now that you see that, you can then decide to head over that way to start working those targets, to start clearing it all out for friendly uh, forces to bring troops and take over the island to then progress along Lattice Alpha. Or you can go and say, for example, you're going to see other you know, players on the map, um, you can then just join them. And over here, these aircraft are working Lattice Delta. So again, if I drop another mark point right here, and we'll put dash update Delta. We drop that and you can see here, Lattice Delta, Objective, Bimani. And you can see that they are currently working these locations. So we zoom in a little bit. Uh, it looks like Central, which is right here has few enemies left because they're they're bombing them and they're taking care of them, right? You can decide on how you want to play this year. Um, if there's, for me personally, when I see a lot of aircraft in one area, I tend to shy away and go somewhere where, uh, for, in this case, I would go to Lattice Alpha because no one's over here. It gives me more trigger time. It's not overly crowded. Um, and uh, that's my preference. But, you know, fly it however you want to fly it. If you want to join other people in the action, go by all means do it. If you want to, help to work a different area to kind of keep things moving along, then do that as well. Um, it's going to be a lot of ground, air to ground opportunities. When it comes to air to air in this server, um, you can pretty much just ex expect them to kind of pop up. Um, in some in instances, when you're working a target, you know, they'll just kind of pop up on radar and you need to address that. So always keep your head uh, you know, on a swivel as well as paying attention to your RWR and your radar system so you can pick up any any enemies and take care of the air to air because um, they will pop up on you in the middle of, of something else that you're doing here. Moving along, now let's talk about rotary aircraft in this server, what you can expect. It's actually a pretty good server for those of you that are in helos, okay? Whether you're in Apache or the K-50 or whatever kind of rotary aircraft you've got, you can really have a good time here. There's a lot of ground targets here. And a lot of times I rather fly one of the rotary aircraft than a jet just because, uh, again, there's so many ground targets. It, it just makes it more interesting to be low to the ground to do strafing runs with guns once you've cleared out some of the major 
uh, AAA or surface to air threats, um, which typically is what your what your fixed wing aircraft are going to do for you. And then you can kind of come in and work those ground targets, those tanks, those troops, and um, and all of that, and then get in there and have a really good time here. Not to mention, uh, a lot of times because you have access to the farps as they unlock, you you get to be a little bit closer to the action versus uh, being in a fixed wing aircraft. Right now, it doesn't look too bad, but once you start progressing further deeper into the mission, when you're way up here in these bases, um, a lot of times you're still spawning in fixed wing aircraft from the carrier or maybe here at the shoreline, uh, the coastline here, and it's still a little good ways away from a flight time. Um, when you're in these uh, rotary aircraft, you get to be a little bit closer. It's not too bad. So you can kind of get more time on targets uh, versus spending more time flying to get to a target location. Secondly, for those of you that are really into running supply runs to support the operations here, you guys are the real MVPs of the server uh, that are uh, transporting troops to take over the uh, locations once we've eliminated all hostile threats from them. Super, super important. Otherwise, nothing advances. And equally as important, if not more, are those folks that are running the C-130s. Uh, this is uh, the mod that you need to have in the server here. Those folks that are flying the C-130 that are transporting over ammunitions that we need to the FARPs and to the forward air bases uh, for our, our weapons to even run uh, these missions, right? Air to air, air to ground, and so on and so forth. Um, you guys are super clutch and it's an opportunity for you to just do something a little bit different and in fact it can be really intense i recall one instance where i was radioing into uh forces that were nearby an area that they said was clear and i said okay cool i'm gonna bring in troops and as i'm getting ready to land uh in the area to drop off the troops in the crates uh well that area wasn't fully clear and i was taking fire from enemy uh uh Ground forces, it made for an interesting flight, uh, took a lot of shots, but it was definitely a butt clincher. So you can have those kinds of experiences too. Don't think that just because you're not firing off weapons that you still can't get an intense, you know, blood pumping experience. Because when you're dropping troops off and you have no weapon systems, it's a different kind of feeling when you're out there naked and having to rely on some of these other uh, players in the server to cover you. And so that really brings in a, a, a different level of, of co-op kind of, um, you know, working together to uh, accomplish the mission. It's really cool. So don't overlook the supply opportunities running the supply side of the mission here. It can be a lot of fun. All right, boys, that is a crash course on the Gray Flag Persian Gulf server right here. Kind of like the bare bones of what you need to know. Definitely recommend going into the server, their Discord server, and reading the detailed information on all of this. And I believe they're going to give you a uh, more accurate kind of look at those lattices, the breakdown with, with the lines and, and all that as well in their uh, full breakdown in the server. So you, if you want to really know where Lattice Alpha Bravo Charlie Delta is, you can go to their server and in their uh, how-to, I believe it'll have that accurately displayed there you know not my janky uh, on the fly description one or mock-up or whatever but you get the idea and that's kind of how this server works and it can be a real good time one thing that's really good about it is generally speaking uh folks are pretty vocal on srs and that just for me makes the immersion a lot better when people are coordinating their strike efforts uh looking for a wingman uh looking to take out SA sites. So that'll wrap it up for this server review video. I'd love to hear what you guys think about it. If you fly in the gray flag server, if you're looking forward to it, especially for those of you that jump into it for the first time, you know, it's going to take you some time. Don't jump in at once and then give up on it. You got to commit to it, put in a little effort. It gets easier and your understanding gets better each time you find the server and it really can uh, be a good time for you. So that's all I got for you guys in this video. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed it, appreciate it. Go ahead and like, subscribe, call sign, grab me out.